I feel like when you walk in that door, that my job is to let you know I'm glad you're there. Mm. Because as the fat girl on the couch, mm. I probably never would have walked through that door. Mm. So I... And you do a great job of that as I, well. It's just, it's scary mm. when you walk in somewhere and mm -hmm. you don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. But the great thing about Jazzercise and the reason I think we have so many people that have stayed with us for so long is that we cultivate a safe room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that when you come in that room, you are in that room to have fun, to exercise, and that one hour is yours. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Lauren Lucas. I'm obsessed with learning and I live for true authentic connection. I'm a wife, a working mom, professional singer songwriter, and an instructor of songwriting at my alma mater, Belmont University. You could say that life's a little full. I'm always looking for a way to sneak in some me time with great friends, good food, and meaningful conversation. Here we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the hard, and the wonderful. My guests include well-known recording artists, hit songwriters, film directors, wellness coaches, and creative entrepreneurs. Plus, we throw in a delicious beverage, an easy weekend recipe. Think of it like happy hour, but better. I'm Lauren Lucas. This is The Happiest Hour. It's the happiest hour when I'm with you. It's the happiest hour. Let's raise our glasses to doing this crazy life together. Keeping it real can't get much better. As long as I'm with you, it's the happiest hour. Oh, a quick P.S. My plan is to bring you a full season of The Happiest Hour. But let's be honest, as a busy working toddler mom, work-life balance, at least for me, can be a challenge sometimes. So I might skip a week here and there. Here's what that means. No matter how you enjoy the happiest hour, whether it's through the YouTube live video or through your favorite podcast app, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for the latest episode. That way, you won't miss a thing. Today, my guest is one of my personal wellness coaches. Her name is Mary Helen Yarbrough, and uh, I take her classes uh, every week. And yes, I am talking about Jazzercise. You have heard me talk about Jazzercise before in my love for the class. Mary Helen is so inspiring. I know you're going to be inspired by this episode. So um, let's not waste any more time. Come on, sit down. Cheers. Welcome to the happiest hour. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to introduce um my friends and audience to you and your story because you were so inspiring to me and um i'm i'm hoping and wondering if you would be willing to share your story because you have a very powerful one about being a young woman and really focusing on your wellness and well-being and health and so would you mind sharing your story i would love to thank you um i think mostly when i when i think about why i I'm so passionate about fitness. When I was growing up, I was 15. I weighed 210 pounds. And, you know, back then, if we look back in the 60s mm -hmm. um, and, and early 70s, you didn't see a lot of heavy people. You know, when you go back and look at old videos, like the graduations, you, you didn't see heavy people. Mm -hmm. And they dressed well, by the way. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, um, I started losing weight. And, you know, in high school, it wasn't my, I didn't love it. I didn't have a lot of girlfriends because, you know, I'm a cute one. And, <laughs> and I learned quickly to love sports. Mm. Because if you loved sports and you knew about them, then guys would be your friend. Mm. So I always had a lot of guy friends because I love sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as I ended up, one day I, my mom passed away when she was 48. Mm. That's another Gosh. reason how old were you? I was 15. Oh, when she passed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's okay. when I talked to 210. Okay. When I got on the scale and looked and went, that's pretty good. Mm. And I was always told I was big bum. Mm. I got that one a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> just and maybe bum. I am. I don't know. But. <laughs> <laughs> but you're like, okay. And then, so I decided to lose weight mm. and I started counting calories. First thing I ever did. Mm. And I would look and like get the little book out. They had little books mm. back there. Was there like a particular program? No. no you program. just, okay, you just yeah. kind of knew intuitively yeah. this is what I needed and to so do. And so that's what I started doing. I started eating salads. Okay. And um, 
I mean, I grew up like everybody else, eggs, bacon, sausage, mm -hmm. biscuits, mm -hmm. gravy. Um, but I realized I was just overeating. My snack when I came home from school mm -hmm. was canned corn with a half stick of butter in it. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. I'm just going to leave that right there. That's right. <laughs> So no, I, I, can, I, I, yeah. I can relate with that. Yeah. yeah. And I used to eat uh, Jiffy Cake mix mm. in a bowl, mix it up with uh, water and okay. eat it. Okay. You couldn't get me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> or eat canned corn. Yeah. So, but the thing is, I, um, after my mom passed away, I ended up um, slowly losing weight. Mm. Uh, my parents owned a flower shop. I was raised in a flower shop. I always I didn't know that. worked. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of us did. We okay. all worked in the flower shop. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that mm. because it taught me how to deal with people. I used to answer the phones and wait on customers and, mm -hmm. and run the cash register and learn how to do money, mm -hmm. uh, ride with people to the airport back in the day to pick up the flowers at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that I love retail. Mm. I love retail. I love dealing with people all mm. the time. In fact, well, I can see that about yeah. Your and so it's so it's just rewarding to me to be able to help somebody else and make them happy, whether it was clothes or food or mm -hmm. making a cocktail. Mm -hmm. I think that's fascinating. No, so when you when you started on your journey, your your weight loss journey, your was it all about weight or was there a Oh my gosh, this isn't healthy. We're, at 15, were health concerns even really factored that in? That healthy wasn't even a verbiage back then. So it okay, was more yeah. of, I'm just, you know, everybody else had a little lady, what was that line called? Um, ladybug clothes. They had all hmm. these cute little skirts and the little go-go uh, boots, mm -hmm. the little white go-go boots. Uh -huh. well, <laughs> I couldn't zip mine over my calf. So there's that. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, um, I just wanted to lose some weight and mm -hmm. I'd lose 20 pounds at a time mm -hmm. and then I'd stop and I'd eat and then I'd lose 20 pounds mm -hmm. and then I'd stop. So the, the year between my, not, back then you went to school from 7th, 8th and ninth, like a middle or intermediate, middle school. intermediate then level. you went to high school and it was 10, 11, 12. Okay. So that summer, because when my mom passed away in January and that summer, I lost like 25 to 30 pounds before I went back to school in the 10th grade, hmm. which was huge to me. Mm -hmm. But by the time I graduated, I had lost down to like 150. I remember the first time I walked in somewhere and I could buy clothes in a regular store. Wow. Instead wow. of Sears and Roebuck, size 22 and a half. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's amazing to think about that now because I've yeah. only known you like this, like this, and, and you've, and you've been this size presumably since you were 17, 18 now. Yes. Yeah. With both children, I gained 55 pounds. Mm. It was like, what's what can I eat next? Yeah. yeah. And I was teaching three classes a day. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> well, that's why you kept eating. You were hung you were hungry. <laughs> three <laughs> classes. I could. Of, yeah. So and so did was the calorie counting or or the method that you chose mm -hmm. and you used, which sounds like it was actually very intuitive. I mean, it sounds like you just kind of knew intuitively to do that. Well, that was the only thing you had back then was counting calories. And then, okay. you know, as all the fitness crazes progressed, mm -hmm. it was all, oh, you don't have to do that. You can do this. I still think a calorie is a calorie. Mm -hmm. I, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, calories in, calories out. Mm -hmm. And as you age, you really start to see that. It's like mm -hmm. you've got to move a little bit more if you're going to keep eating the amount you're eating. Mm. You can't. Mm. So. so did when you were young -er, <laughs> did uh was it did it ever feel restrictive or it felt like you were motivated and like no this I was, was motivated. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was motivated. And so what prompted you to how did you find Jazzercise and what prompted That's, you to become an so instructor? So we were it was in the paper. Okay. And there was a picture of this instructor on stage and it said Jazzercise. Well I love music, I always have, I can't mm. play a thing. But I was like, oh, that needs to be fun. So, unfortunately, there were about six of us. We went to happy hour, and then we went to jazzercise. And so, around what age were you? Were you married with kids already? I was... I was married before Bob, and he okay. was killed in a car accident. Oh, goodness. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, I was married. 
Okay. And so we all started going. That's right. And um, I thought this, you know, I went, I was the only one that continued. Okay. Everybody else kept going happy hour. Uh huh. And I didn't. <laughs> I kept going to Jazzercise. Yeah. And it was out the Bellevue School. That's okay. how long ago this was. And about six months into it, the instructor comes up to me and goes, You need to be an instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, are you crazy? I never took speech in school. I had never stood up in front of a group of people ever. Wow. I wow. was like, you're you're funny. That's what I said. So that's she, that's really wild to think about because you are so great. Well, you're very kind, but it took, I mean, I thought, no, I no. Wow. So and she goes, No, you have to. And we didn't wear shoes. <laughs> I remember you saying that sometimes like, no I shoes. Have to that. Wow. Stirrup tights. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just look back on that poor thing. My poor feet. And so and then so then from instructor to franchise owner. So uh, back to when when you become um, an instructor, back then you were a franchisee. Oh. So we all are franchisees. Okay. It's just a whether or not you're going to end up running a center or not. So you're either an associate now okay. and you teach or you're an owner. Okay. So, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's the beauty of Jazzercise has empowered many women. Mm -hmm. oh, sure. Sure. Absolutely. It's been great. So, um, so think back to you're a, you're a wife, you are a young mom, you have two girls, you're running your own small business. Help us understand like, how did you balance it all? How did you wear all the hats? And any uh, advice or tips that you could give, you know, especially women who are, they're, they're momming, they're working, they're doing all the things. It's hard. How do you do and, it? And I love that you want to help other people and other women. They need support and mm -hmm. they need to talk about it. Back then, I mean, I just was like in a hamster wheel mm -hmm. because I taught three classes a day. Um, I taught two down at TPAC and uh, one at night, mm -hmm. and then I would take the, I'd jump in the car, run the kids to Mother's Day out, mm -hmm. run downtown and teach, come back, fix dinner for them to take to Jazzercise, <laughs> pick them up, yeah, bring them home, and I, the, my advice to them would be this: stop and smell the roses for a second, and mm -hmm. it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Stop long enough to be in the moment, and I've told my girls this, mm -hmm. because all I ever did was, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we're late, let's mm -hmm. go, mm -hmm. hurry, hurry. Mm -hmm. And I just think back on that and go, oh wow, that's, you know. But they got exposed to lots of people, yeah, and everybody came into the childcare room to see them. Yeah, <laughs> they had lots of friends. They had lots of friends, <laughs> and they all feel like that they know them, yeah. And they grew up with them. And of course, my children are like, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Right, right. You know, and they don't mean that in a bad way. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, you've had, I mean, well, a couple of things are going through my head. One is, I mean, from what I can tell, you, it's not like, oh, here's a book of business. I right. mean, you then, were, yeah. you were Pioneers, gaining really. your clients through relationship building, I yes. imagine, and who yes. you know. And I mean, you all had word to build. It was all word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. All and so, it. and I mean, I've been taking from you off and on through different seasons for twenty. I mean, I started at the YWCA. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not you weren't there much longer, but I mean, so it's been tw almost twenty years. Yes, because we were there for ten years. Okay, okay. W. Well, well, I mean, that, some I of the women, they're they are still. Okay. We are still with you. So yes. I mean, people have stuck with you for. 20 plus years. I'm sure there are some of the women, yeah, 30, and men, I, yeah. I should say. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. have some husbands come and, uh, and are regulars, you know. Um, so how, how do you feel like you cultivated, well, first of all, how did you cultivate clientele from, from nothing, becoming an instructor? And how do you, what would you attribute to keeping this really loyal base of, of clients? I feel like when you walk in that door that my job is to let you know I'm glad you're there mm. because as the fat girl on the couch mm. I probably never would have walked through that door mm. so I you do a great job of that as I, well. it's just it's scary mm. when you walk in somewhere and mm -hmm. you don't know anybody mm -hmm. but 
the great thing about Jazzercise and the reason I think we have so many people that have stayed with us for so long is that we cultivate a safe room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that when you come in that room, you are in that room to have fun, to exercise, and that one hour is yours. Mm -hmm. a, a good example of that is sickness or you're having a hard time outside of that room or let's say you have cancer mm -hmm. or your dad has died. Mm -hmm. When you walk into that room, I don't address that with you. Mm -hmm. I've already called you. Mm -hmm. I've sent you a note. Uh, I've texted you. So that when you walk in, I'm I'm there to make you happy for an hour. Yeah, that's it. And so, and also, I think that you know when we go to the floor, we're I always say turn around and say hello to mm -hmm. people around you. Yeah, because it's you know it's scary. Yeah, and being I still have that you know two ten mentality mm -hmm. of you know I'm embarrassed, I'm scared, mm -hmm. and so I don't want you to feel that way. Well, I I've noticed. I mean, there are women who currently have cancer in class or who have lost someone or who are switching jobs or careers. And, and I know that because, because we do, we stand around each other and we have grown to know each other over right. the years. And so it, it's such a sweet community to be a part of. And the thing that I have noticed from even when I was in my twenties taking your class and it wasn't, it, it's becoming more and more important to me the older I get. But even in my twenties, I noticed that it was valuable is how you will mention during certain exercises, like, hey, when you're using your glutes or your quad, this is what's gonna stabilize you, make sure you don't fall. This is what's gonna keep you strong so that you can do this, that, and the other. And it's it's just a bit more than, come on, let's pump iron. It's not <laughs> like that. You know, it's not it's not it's, getting fit for a superficial reason. It is for our health. wellness and to thrive. And also things that you I want you to do outside of class. Yes. To stabilize. Right. And that's what Jazzercise does. It's mm -hmm. continuous education for us all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. Mm -hmm. We're constantly getting things that we have to read and they have to know that we read them and mm -hmm. we're getting monitored and they are very good about keeping up with what you're doing as an instructor. And that's their, that's one of their big things. They're, yeah. That's why we are good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so debunk. We probably should have started here, and I'm sorry. We're however many minutes in now, but uh, elephant in the corner, debunk the stigma, st potential stereotype of jazzercise, because I'm here to tell you, and I've told my audience, it is not your grandmama's workout or your mama's workout. It is not 1981 Jane Fonda. It, so what is jazzercise now? So the difference I would say today is back when we first started, is that we're still here. Mm. All these other fitness places have come and gone. Mm. We're still here. Why mm -hmm. are we still here? Well, we empower women. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we change. We always have new music. We always have new routines. You know, we don't wear leg warmers. <laughs> um, you know, somebody said that the other day. I said, well, have you been to Nordstrom's lately? Do they sell leg warmers? Right. Well, <laughs> we don't either. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, we've always, always stepped up and have always really been a step ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, we do Pilates, we do yoga, we mm -hmm. do kickboxing. So we always stay current. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we also have a physiologist on staff. We've always had that. So we keep it fresh mm -hmm. and it's fun. Yeah. And that's, I think that's, I guess, maybe some of the difference from back then is that we just keep evolving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is. It's a blast and it is tough. I mean, yeah. it's real tough. And some of the floor strength exercises you choose. <laughs> if I say it's difficult, then I say, oh, it's difficult. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you are so inspiring on and off the, <laughs> the platform that you teach on in, in the class. And it, it isn't just this rah-rah, again, I use the word superficial, you know, like positive quote kind of happiness. It, it really is, seems to be ingrained into, into your philosophy on life. So where, you know, life is hard. You've been through some tough stuff. You shared a little bit about what some of that was for you. Where does that come from? And what is, what is your life philosophy, I guess? So when I was 15 and very heavy, I was, you know, contemplated hmm, suicide. Hmm. And so once I came out of that, 
Uh, you're making me cry. That's okay. Um, we can cry. <laughs> um, um, the thing is, is that I realized I never wanted to feel that way again. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I've always said you have a choice. Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning and you look in that mirror, you're, this is who you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. It's not everybody else. And it's also, I've always said, and I've taught my girls, if you, you treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And if you're ugly to somebody, then they have the right to be ugly to you. Mm -hmm. Now, does it always work? No, it does not. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> but um, I, that's my philosophy, mm -hmm. is treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And so for me to be unhappy or sad or and we're, we are don't don't misunderstand me but I choose to be happy mm -hmm. and when I'm not and I can't do something for somebody else then I don't feel as good mm -hmm. I feel better for myself if I can do something for somebody else yeah. and for me that's teaching jazzercise and being happy or having somebody to dinner or mm -hmm. you know going and meeting somebody for lunch or yeah. just being with your friends yeah Yes. And the older you get, you realize that you need to do that more. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Well, thanks for being so honest and <laughs> vulnerable with us. So um, let's change gear just a little bit. Uh, just fun girl talk. Okay. Some of your favorite products, something you're loving right now. It could be workout gear. It could be makeup. It could be, you always have, your your nails are done so nice. I do my you own nails. Jewelry. You I do? do? I do my own nails. Really? I got up this morning at 5.30 and did my nails. Oh my, have you always done that? Mm -hmm. I've been doing my nails since I was in the sixth grade. Oh my gosh. Is And you do you enjoy like the actual process of it? Well, <laughs> I don't like to look down and not see my, my hands up. Manicured? Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of my favorite, um, yeah. I mean, I luxuries is, yeah. is yeah. An, and I don't but have one right see, now. I'm not but I'm a good sitter. So when oh, I go yeah. and have to sit there, and then they don't talk to me, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'll talk to myself and do my own nails then. <laughs> well, if I'm doing it at home, I can I can be learning a routine or putting a set together or yeah, I, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, I'm really bad. Okay, yeah. well, sorry, I got you off no, track no, on the nails, no. but what? Uh, so what jewelry. are you loving? I love jewelry. Yeah, but you know, my brother made this, and yes, Nola made this, oh, and nice. Nola made this. And Beautiful. Cricket gave me that. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. yeah. I, and I always think that earrings are good. Like, if I don't have on earrings, I'm mm -hmm. naked. Mm -hmm. But that's just, I love that. What was your other question? Um, you went somewhere. Oh, no, no, just, just favorite. Whatever you're, oh, whatever you're loving. Oh, a I'm certain a, type? Yeah, I'm a big coffee person. I, well, I only buy local. Okay, what do, you, what do you like? So, I love Just Love. Okay. Eighth and Rose. Okay. Um, what's the one right down here on the port? Um. Portland Brew? Portland Brew. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I need to learn some more. We had um, Frothy Monkey recently. Oh, Frothy Monkey. I used to go, to, when I would go downtown to get my hair done a long time ago, I'd always go to Frothy okay. Monkey. Yeah. 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 And it's according to what's available in my area. Okay. You know, where I don't have to drive too far. Mm -hmm. But Whole Foods always has a good local. Fresh mm -hmm. Market always has good local. Mm -hmm. So, okay, nice. I local coffee. Very that's nice. nice. That's Number one. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. So question, this is the last question. All right. So, um, are you glad it's over? <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked all my guests this. Okay. So if it were all gone tomorrow, the, mm -hmm. the clients, jazzercise classes, mm -hmm. um, what would you want to leave behind or what would you want people to know? Hmm. that you should live every day the best you can. To always, hopefully, leave people with a smile. And I always say that when I'm gone, go buy fresh flowers and always have fresh flowers in your house. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, don't yeah. don't be whining, don't be crying, just go buy fresh flowers and go, there you go. Mm -hmm. And you brought me a beautiful bouquet today. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Mary Helen, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. thank you all so much for tuning in to another Happiest Hour. Um, let me ask you this, and I'll put it in the show notes too. So you're a local franchise, so yeah. I can I will put the information. If you are local to Nashville, I will put where you can find Mary Helen's class, and I highly recommend you come take a class. 
uh, with me uh, and Mary Helen. Um, and if they if, if people are watching and they're not in the Nashville area, yeah. where should they go if they want to check out you Just Jazz go to jazzercise.com. Okay. And then you'll put in your area where you are and they'll find the closest Jazzercise class to you. Okay. Very good. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Oh, that was so much fun. I wish I could talk to my guests for hours. If you want more from The Happiest Hour too, make sure you head over to laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour for the show notes, recipes, and products mentioned in the episodes. And you can learn how to access Happiest Hour bonus content. Oh, and if you're looking for a way to make true and authentic connections with other people who are music lovers, who want to carry on the conversations that are started on the Happiest Hour episodes, and who are friendly and supportive, join my exclusive online community. It's absolutely free, and we would love to have you. I run fan contests there from time to time. I do free live stream concerts. The link is waiting for you at laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour. Until next time.